Good evening, good evening, good evening, good evening. God bless you. It's so good to be back on the broadcast. It's been a while, uh, not of my own choosing, but uh, I just heard the Lord say, make the attempt tonight. And I'm just so glad to be here. Hi, LaShonda. Hey, sweetheart. Want to get a chance to talk to you one-on-one. -on -one. We're going to sh share some things that are going to be a blessing to you. Just want to talk to you. Amen. Amen. Love you, darling. And so tonight, um, we want to get back. Well, we're going to get into something that the Holy Spirit put on my heart. And um, it, it's a concern that I have about uh, the church, uh, Christendom, uh, the church arena. Um, and I do know that we know that everybody that attends church, hey, Sister Rogers, that everybody attends, that attends church is not a believer. Everybody that attends church is not committed to the Lord. Everybody that attends church is not there for the right reason. And so because the church is crowded, because, hey, Sharon, because the church is full, because the church is busy and doing things, does not mean that the Lord has set his approval upon what's going on and those who are those who are leading those people we're in a dangerous time hey sister burnett we're in a dangerous time now and god is looking for he's looking for himself <laughs> he's looking no no he's looking to see if we are going to be what he wants us to be and do what he called us to do and so now I praise God for this opportunity today to just kind of share some things. Not going to be before you very long. And I'd like for you to take this in and, and, and pray over it and, and see what God would have you to do um, as a believer in Christ Jesus. Uh, I'm going to give a brief, brief word of prayer and then we're going to go into the word of the Lord. Uh, we bind every hindering spirit in the name of Jesus. We ask the Lord to be with us on tonight for this brief moment. Father, we thank you and praise you for the opportunity to share a little of your word tonight with your people. And we're asking you, oh God, to bind everything that's not like you. You call this. And so I'm just being obedient to you. These are your people and the sheep of your pasture, Father. And I'm asking you, God, to speak a word to your people that they may be blessed, that they may be delivered. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Thank God. Amen and amen. Um, the reference scripture tonight that I really want to use has to do with, uh, come from, it comes from Amos chapter 8. I'm going to read that in a little bit. But what I'm noticing in the body of Christ is there, there's a, there are a lot of expository, uh, expository preachers. There are a lot of people who are uh, preaching the word, preaching the gospel and teaching, but something is wrong because whatever we're preaching and teaching, it is not being as effective as it needs to be because it seems like people are getting weaker. Um, people are not taking of the Lord serious. People don't know how to study their Bibles themselves. They don't really uh, understand what this whole thing is about, this church thing, quote unquote. They don't know what this holy walk is about, but they're, they're, they're pouring into the churches and they're shouting and they're uh, bragging on their preacher, their pastors and bragging on the leaders, but something is missing because there's no change in the people. And we're finding that there is a famine. And when we talk about a famine, we're talking about the absence of nourishment. If there's a famine for bread, there's absence of bread. There's no uh, uh, substance. There's no nourishment. The absence of water. If there's a thirst, there's a famine of thirst. That means there's something missing. The water is not there to quench the thirst. That's a, a sign of life. And so Amos found himself being called to be the prophet, to tell the people. He, God used him in visions. And in those visions, he was able to see things and they were like a warnings and, and it was a, a thing of judgment. And so it says, behold, the days are coming 
says the Lord God, that I will send a famine. This is Amos chapter 8, verses 11 through 13, that I will send a famine on the land, not the famine of bread, nor a thirst for water, but of hearing the words of the Lord. They shall wonder, look at this, from C to C means nobody's left out. Everybody on the earth, <laughs> the, the prophetic thing is, they'll be wandering from C to C and from north to east. They shall run to and fro. And what's the result? Seeking the word of the Lord, but shall not find it. That's the result. That's dangerous. Anytime God is not speaking to his people, the people that are hearing the word because the, the word of God guides us and it leads us. And without the voice of God, without his word being understood, the problem is the word on the written page is there. The word on the written page is there, but it has to be brought off of the black and white uh, uh, written word, that logos, and it has to be taken into the hearts of people, but they have to be serious about hearing it and then doing the word of God. So we have a lot of preaching and a lot of teaching going on, but the people are still lost. Now, we talk about people who church hop, and I, I've seen it myself. And I know people do it just because they don't want to uh, follow through. They don't want to follow leadership. But I'm going to tell you something. Some of the church hopping, um, friend of mine and I were talking about, this, some of the people who are church hopping, they're looking for God. They're looking for his word. They're looking for guidance. They want it to be, they want the word to get into their business. They want the word to teach them how to behave themselves. They want the word to teach them how to handle themselves in the midst of their situations. And they want the truth. The people, we are, we are uh, pacifying people. We're giving them what they want to hear. And we're, we're telling people stuff that we do this and we do it in love, but something is wrong somewhere. Something is wrong somewhere simply because it's, it's not working. And as I was talking with my friend, we discussed the fact that one thing missing, our leaders are not seeking God. We're so busy. Uh, we've, we've caused them to uh, enter into the entertainment business because we don't show up for true good teaching. We don't show up for the preaching of the real gospel. We don't show up when people are getting off into those sin that we're doing. And so we have made some preachers, uh, we've influenced these people to start just giving us what we want. So we've created monsters. Uh, we have created uh, some people who would stand firm, God's going to get them, who would stand firm and preach the truth and preach the gospel, but they are so afraid for uh, losing people. They're so afraid of the money's not coming in until now what we're doing, we've created this conglomerate of leaders. Hey, Pastor Granville, uh, of leaders who are just not doing what God has told them to do. And we're in trouble. We're so in trouble. So now, if the Bible tells us, uh, with the believer, the signs follow. What's happening is God has got to release those of us who want to do right, those of us who want to teach the truth, and we're doing it. We're asking God, now, Lord, we're asking you to release the signs, the miracles, and the signs and wonders, if you just look at the few of us, look at the remnant here, would you do it for a few of us? Would you do it for 50? God, would you do it for 20? Would you do it, God, for 10? We're willing. If we're willing to be vessels, we're willing to be instruments because we're losing people. We're losing people who are in the church. We're losing people who are outside of the kingdom who want to come in, but they see no reason to come in. We've got to know that there is a famine for the word of God. We are preaching a gospel, but we are not preaching it the way God wants us to preach it. And we are leaving stuff out so that we can pacify people. And you still are not doing what God says do. God is going to get us for this. And so Amos had the vision. And Amos said, the days are coming, saith the Lord. He spoke what God says speak. And he, he was given the physical, uh, I mean, the vision where he could see things. And then God used those visions to pronounce judgment, to warn the people. And he said 
uh, because God gave him this word. <clears throat> See, this is what we need. Like Amos, we need people to just call a spade a spade. Call the sin a sin. If it's sin, call it a sin. I don't care if it's the biggest tithe payer. If they pay your church no. God will take care of you. You may suffer for a minute, but God will truly deliver. God will take care of you because he is. Do we believe God? He is Jehovah Jireh. He is our provider. So you know what? We got to get, get with this, this program here, God's program. He said through Amos, he says, I will send a famine on the land. There's a famine, y'all, with all of the technology and all of the great, I have some great, um, uh, software man and, and i love it but we have all of this technology we have all of this this great biblical software we have all of these radio and, and and media uh ways of getting the word out something is missing something is wrong because people are still lost people are, don't know how to live right people are not telling them the truth they're afraid if they tell them the truth they will lose favor they will lose um what's coming from that person i'm a witness at our church god will take care of us he will do it but it's a testing of our faith in him it's a testing of our trust in him there have been so many times look like on that sunday look like the budget wasn't met but before that far next sunday god met the budget by miraculous means simply because we know that god called the ministry and he's going to take care of his business. Amen. So we are in trouble, people. And I, I'm pleading with you tonight to seek the face of God and ask God to show you what your part is in this famine. What can you do that the people won't be famished for food and that the people won't be famished from water? We're in trouble. And the Bible says in verse 12 of Amos 8, they shall wander from sea to sea. Why, why are they wandering? W-A-N-D-E-R-I-N-G. Simply because there is no word from the Lord. So some people are church hopping and we're responsible because we're not giving them what they need. Now I know some are doing it because they don't want to be sub submissive to the leadership. But there is a group that's seeking for truth. And we have not, they're not getting it. They're going from here and they're looking on the outside saying, oh, this might be the place for me right here. And once they get into it and buy into it and see the people that are around there, the leaders in that church, the followers in that church have no clue. They have no clue to what it is we're supposed to be doing, what it is we're supposed to be preaching and how we're supposed to be living and behaving ourselves. We are so caught up in our programs till we've lost sight on the Lord's program. God will not compromise because you feel like that's something you want to do and you feel like it's going to draw the people. Our women's ministries, there's so many ways we can reach the women of God and, and, and draw them in. Once you pull them in, what are you giving them? Are you teaching them how to be a chaste and, and keepers of the home? Are you teaching them how not to lust after the other men outside of the marriage? Are you telling them the truth about what their behavior should be as wives and how they should carry themselves and conduct themselves and, and how they should be with their husbands and be good wives and, and submissive to their husbands? Are we teaching this or are we letting them come forth? Ha. Oh, did you, baby? Look at all right, Deborah. Are we, are we just um, allowing them to come forth because we know they want to preach? So we just open the door and find programs and ways to put them up and let them scream and holler and preach when they need to sit down. They need to sit down and they need to be taught the truth. And if they don't want to be sub, uh, submissive to the truth of the word, they're not ready. Release them. If they're not willing to sit. Back in the day when I was coming up, if you couldn't sit, if the old church mother told you to sit or the pastor told you to sit, then you sat until they knew you were getting it right. So we're in trouble. We are in serious trouble. So God has withheld, oh God, I feel your presence. God has withheld the miracles and the signs and the wonders. But I'm getting ready to tell you right now, I feel like God's getting ready to turn this thing around. I want to be counted. What, the, what is the song that says, God 
Whatever you're doing in the season, don't do it without me. That's my, that's my prayer. And I, as old as I am, I said, God, I'm still alive. Yes, some physical things are going on, but God, as long as there's breath in my body, God, I'm asking you to strengthen me. I'm asking you to use me as a vessel. Amen. I get the call sometimes from young women. They don't know which way to go. It. They don't know what to do. Nobody's teaching them. Nobody's telling them. People are uh, over women's ministries just for social stuff. People need to be taught the truth. They need to know how to live for the Lord and then draw other women in. There's some women that want to do right. They don't know what to do. We're so busy trying to, to do uh, social stuff. Come on, social clubbing in the church until we're not taking time out to teach people in love how to be, be good wives and how to be good single mothers. The single mothers have no examples. Amen. Because the people over them are not uh taking time out and mentoring them and talking to them this is why this is why i have instituted a parenting class in my first during my first and third saturday rhema teaching I have a young lady that's doing the parenting classes because parents don't know a lot of times the young parents with the young children they don't know any better some of them don't go to church they're still letting the boyfriend live with them and they're still uh, sleeping around because they feel like that's the way it goes. Somebody has to stop, come from the pulpit, stop trying to show out to preach and take your time and take that time that you have and commit yourself to mentoring. Mentoring is a lost art. Mentoring is lost in the kingdom of God. People need to know that you have something to say because you've been through something. And then you bit because you've been through something and you weather the storm, you can now share with them in love, but in truth and with a firmness, not backing up. Amen. Some of them not, they're gonna challenge you, but let them challenge. If they can whip the word of God, then let them try. I heard one passage say, Your arms are too short to box with God. We're in trouble, you all. The miracles and signs and wonders are going to draw some millennials in here. They don't see anything with us but a lot of flogging, a lot of flashing, a lot of uh, fanfare. This is what they're seeing. So they have the, 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 uh, uh, created their own church <laughs> within the church. They've created their own rules within the church because they see nothing that's stable. They see nothing that's absolute absolutes don't change god's word is absolutely correct it does not change he's the same yesterday today and forever so we've got a lot of preachers a lot of evangelists they're running around they and people are calling them in i was talking to somebody today and and at the church they just they hinge on bringing in people who can all just prophesy and tell the people what they're going to get and tell them they're going to get married and, and when they're going to get married. They're not pursuing. The greatest pursuit we can ever have is pursuing God. And I was saying on yesterday when I brought the word of God, it's in Isaiah chapter 9. And when in Isaiah chapter 9, the, the word came and said, if you're going to brag, if the man of might is going to brag because he thinks he's mighty, uh-uh. If the man of a man who's rich is bragging on his riches, uh-uh. But God said, if you're going to be braggadocious, if you're going to brag on anything, this is what you brag on. Brag on the fact that you, number one, he said that you understand me. We really don't understand God. We have created our own religion. We've created our own church uh, decorum. We've created our own thing. And that's a form that Timothy told Paul. Paul told Timothy, it's a form. We are worshiping and operating in a form of godliness, and there is no power with what we have. Ah, so he said, number one, I want you to brag. Can you brag? Can, can I brag on you? And can you brag on the fact that you understand me? Not what I give you, not because I you have things, but can you brag on the fact that you know me, you know my wrath, you know my, my requirements for you. You know me and you know that we have an intimate relationship is what God meant. Can you brag on the fact, number one, Isaiah was saying, that you understand me? Then secondly, he said, can you brag on the fact that you know me? 
So many people don't know God. They are proclaiming and professing. Now, here's the scary part. People who are leading with a great uh, uh, accolade behind them, these people don't really understand God. They really don't know God. If you follow them past the pulpit, if you follow them into their offices where they sit and prepare what they call a sermon, you will find out that they don't themselves have an intimate relationship because they don't look to God for the message for the people. They give what they figure the people want. And so this is why we are in serious trouble. We're looking for the signs and the wonders. They're missing in with the word that we're giving and people don't understand who God is. They say God is their slot machine. He's the God that when I ask him something, I pull down the lever and I expect him to do it because you said in the word, y'all preach to me about Mark, what is it, 11 and 22 in there, you know, by faith, yes, but you don't break that thing down and, and pull it apart, inductively pull the words apart. Then once you've inductively studied, pull the parts and take them and pull them, put them back together. Once you've looked at each part and each part has to connect. Amen. Come on in here. Chronologically, we're looking at it. We're looking at it biblically and theologically. We're asking God, what did it mean to that person with that wrote it? So God, what are you saying to us today? We're in trouble. We're in trouble. So people are giving people what sounds good. And we're listening to prominent preachers and uh, TV preachers and all of this that are preaching and, and, and thousands are attending their services. And we're saying, this is what I need to do to pull and grow my church. That's not how the church is grown, people of God. God himself is the one uh, over in Corinthians is talking about, you know, they were bragging on, well, this one is a, of a, a Paul and this is one, he's of, of Cephas and, and they were all boasting about who got saved through whom. Well, the church is built because the Holy Spirit builds the church because we're giving the truth and we are obeying God. That's how God builds his church through the word of the Lord. And we're messed up. And then we're wondering why people don't come. I'm not saying that everybody that's doesn't come in, that doesn't come to church is that they have a valid reason. But some people are not being bottom line. They're not being F-E-D. They're not being fed. There's so much fanfare and so much this going on. And nobody is willing to take those to the, that you see that's messing up, those that you see that look like they have a little inkling of something in them, they, they desire to do something right, take them aside and teach. Jesus spent his whole lifetime when he was released, when he was sent out and he was first of all thrust into the wilderness. He needed the wilderness experience in order for him to teach and to train the disciples. He had a purpose when he came here. Come on in here. He had a purpose. He came to seek and save that which was lost. And once you seek and save and pull in the lost, the lost have to know how to walk upright. The church has to come into being. And by the church needing to come into being, who's going to start? Who's going to be members of this church? Who's going to be the leaders of this church? Jesus knew that the ones that he selected by hand, the 12 were his leaders. And one of those was a devil till God had to show you got to be careful because even in the midst of those who seem to be faithful and committed, there can be a demon who has perched himself and put himself right there so that he can pick them off one by one. When you don't teach people, when you always handing people fish that need to eat and you ne never teach them how to fish, you know, you're not uh, <clears throat> going to be there forever. you got to teach people how to fish for themselves. Give them the word of God. And then we get upset. We want to lure people into our services and we want to lure people into our churches. Why are you luring them in when you have nothing to offer them? People need more than all of this fanfare you're preaching and you call yourself teaching. And then you're not living it yourself. God has gotten tired. But I, I, my girlfriend and I, we're praying that the Lord will release to those who of us who are willing. Because 
sometimes we get weary and we get tired because see, it seems like the people who are not really living anything and, and seeking God and, and loving the people enough to tell them the truth, they seem to be soaring high. And so we have to be very careful ourselves because the devil wants to wear us out. You know, the Bible says, be careful. Don't be weary in well-doing. And I have to really remind myself, Vivian, it's not about you. Don't focus on the other folk. You know, what is that uh, psalmist said? My feet or my foot almost slipped. I was looking at you. I was looking at the prosperity of the weekend and my foot almost slipped looking at you because I thought you were the one that was really soaring high and you had it all going on. But I'm going to tell you something. I'm learning that these people are so far from God, they don't have an intimate relationship with him. You know why I know it? Because when you have a true, powerful, intimate, uh, a close relationship with the Lord, you are going to suffer. You are going, it's the suffering that brings us out with a greater anointing. It's the suffering. People are not looking to suffer. You know, the, Paul says, I want to know him in the power of his resurrection. And with the fellowship, I fellowship with the Lord in the suffering. The suffering that I go through is where I get that intimacy. The suffering that I go through is where I learn to lean on him. The suffering that I go through, I learn that Vivian is not about anything because her flesh is making her do things that shouldn't be done. I learn my flesh in my suffering. My flesh has to come under subjection in my suffering. I watch how the devil will use my flesh if I let him. So it's the fellowship of his sufferings, of our suffering, the things that we go through, that God can use us. So we are a, we are a spiritually famished people with all of the media. Come on, all the DVDs and all the means of listening to the word of God. We have not allowed God to break us. God is looking for a broken people. That, you know, that alabaster box <laughs> that the woman had. Ah, when the box was broken. Oh, inside was the, 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 the oil. Amen. The perfume. Amen. That was released. Well, God is looking to uh, for the alabaster boxes in our lives. Amen. We have just uh, left the, the, the core of what Christianity is about. We're calling this and we're calling that. We're calling fast. We're calling prayer ministries. And even in there, we're, ga we're gathering with people and there's some jealousy going on. And there's some person who's outdoing the other one. And, and the one who has a prophetic word and she wants to outdo the other one who has a prophetic word. God is tired as junk. It's nothing but junk. God is going to raise up some people. He's going to raise up a nation. He's raising up a nation. And everything I can, every uh, time I can uh, share with a young woman of God, that's my ministry, or share with a young man of God, the truth, whether they like to hear it or not, hey, Renee, whether they want to hear it or not, you are on a bound. You might call, you know, to do your own thing and say what you want to say. We are ambassadors for the king. We carry his precious uh, gospel. We carry the word of the Lord and God is looking for us to say it like he says, say it, live it like he says, live it. And whatever the consequences, we say, Lord, we're in your hands. We're in your hands. And so Amos said, behold, the days are coming, says the Lord, that I will send a famine on the land. We're in a famine, you all. You will say, well, Dr. West and Mother West and Supervisor, how is that with all the good preachers? It has, how do you describe good? Like the young rich man came and he was just saying, you know, something about good. Uh, no, nobody's good but the father. Amen. How are you describing a good preacher? What is a good preacher? You got to understand what that means. Amen. We're calling good what we describe as good. It, it was our way of, it's our criteria. It, it's the way we see good. It's because it's satisfying us. That's the trouble. We're satisfying ourselves and we're not allowing the Lord to strip us of ourselves. We're not allowing the Lord to take everything from us that shouldn't be. Uh, we used to sing the song, take it out 
and straighten me. I want to be right. I want to be saved and I want to be whole. We don't, we don't sing that anymore. We don't talk about that anymore. It's all about accolades. It's all about uh, uh, the hierarchy. It's all about who's who, who's over at this church and who spoke over here and what did they say what was needed to be said. You sometimes will sacrifice the pat on the back when you tell the truth. Are you willing to do that? No, most of us are not willing to do that. God is looking and searching for a people. He's raising up a people that will stand flat footed and tell the truth. Tell the goodness of the Lord. Tell the truth about sin. Tell the truth about relationship with him. Tell the truth about the need for an intimacy with him. Are we in that place? Many of us are not. This is why we're having so many. The church, I know the Bible says that there was a going to be a great falling away, and it is falling. This is one of the reasons why there's a falling away. We're not preaching the truth. We're not giving the absolute truth because out of the group that's falling away, there are some that would hold on if we gave them the truth. There's some who are not in the group of falling away. They're just waiting on somebody to lead them to Christ, to lead them to the gospel, to lead them to the truth about the word of God. And we're so caught up in what we're doing. We're so caught up in what we think church is all about. Amen. And got some who are hopping from church to church because there's something missing. They, they're there and they're looking for the truth and they get there and find out that the preacher is just compromising because he wants to keep his offerings and tithes and he's trying to keep the group, the head count. And he's, he's trying to keep the relationship with certain folk. Amen. And people are tired of that. They want to know, where am I getting off here? What is God requiring of me? And we're not breaking it down. We're giving generalities to people. My baby that's on here, she hadn't been really committed to the Lord very long. And I, I told her, I said, I want to talk to you because I gave her a word on Sunday. And so I need to now break that down to her, tell her what that means. We send people off with certain uh, words and prophecies, and they don't know what that means. You leave them to themselves. If you're going to mentor people, if you're going to disciple people, and that's what it's all about, bringing in these people into the kingdom and discipling them. We release them into the programs. We, get, we want them to get, come on in, get saved, join our church, and now line up with the pro. What is the program? Is it God's program? Come on in here. God is saying, these are my little ones. I'd rather you have a noose around your neck uh, with a... Uh, a millstone and just kill yourself. Just jump on off into the water for then for you to offend. Well, it's not always talking about hurting somebody that way. When you don't give people the truth, you're offending the little ones. You're not giving them what it means, what, it, what they need to survive, for, what it means for them to uh, live the life, the abundant life that the Lord has uh, designed for us to live. And so the warning is coming to those of us who know. The warning is coming to us because we, God, people are depending on those of us who say we've been called and called. And we're saying that we know the Lord. That's it, baby. You should know the truth and the truth shall make you free. Hallelujah. And so, uh, but of the hearing of the words, he says, this is not a famine of bread. It's not a famine of full water, but of hearing the words of the Lord. People are so caught up in trying to become. And, and, and if you finish that, that's an open-ended sentence. To become what? To become whom? They want to become the pastor's pet. They want to become a part of the elite group. They want to be known as the key person in the church. Nobody's trying to be known as one who understands God, the one who's humble themselves, come on to hear the word and obey the word at any cost. We're not doing that. We're so busy trying to be the greatest prophet and prophetess and trying to be the great, great or the greatest prayer word and trying to be the great or the greatest teacher. The master is the greatest. And just that little part that he will give us as a part of a piece of the kingdom, a piece of, of what's uh, the responsibility, I'm honored, I'm grateful. 
whatever my destiny is. I just want to do it and do it right. But above, above all things, as Isaiah 9 says, I want to boast that I understand God. I'm going to tell you the things that I've walked through this past couple of years. I thought I understood God, but it was through the testings and the trials and the tribulations that I began to know God in a greater way. I knew of him somewhat and I knew some things about him because my trials and my tribulations were not on the level where they are now. So I now know God a little bit better than I used to know him. If you're not knowing him better than you did last year, then you have not understood. The disciples didn't understand Jesus. <laughs> they walked with him, people of God, and didn't understand him. We're saying we're walking with God. We're praying and some of us. We're praying and some of us are fasting and some of us are reading the word of God and we're, and we're depending on this and depending on that. We still have not uh, humble ourselves enough to say, God, what is it you would require of me? Don't try to, we're measuring ourselves by the people around us. You can't do that. Our perfect example and our perfect writ is Jesus Christ and the word of God. And then Amos says in Amos 8, the end of, well, the middle of verse, I started the middle of verse 11. He says, well, that I'll send a famine in the land, not a famine of bread, not a thirst for water, but of hearing the words of the Lord. The people had uh, messed up so bad till God stopped speaking to them. And they realized we're not getting anywhere. We're, we're in serious trouble because you need the word of God to guide you. You need the spirit of God to lead you into the paths of righteousness. Otherwise, you're going to walk in a path that's not a godly path. Seek for the old path. Nothing changes. God's pathway of holiness is always the same. You got a new era. You got uh, new ways of, of getting to God or getting to his word and studying and all. But God's path of righteousness does not change people of God. So he told Amos, he says, it's not that kind of famine, but it's a famine. I'm not going to hold you on here long. It's a famine of hearing the words of the Lord. He said, they shall wonder. They're talking about the people that are looking, they miss God and they didn't appreciate the word of God. He said, they're going to start looking for me now. They're in trouble. They know they're in trouble. They're going to go, this, this, this famine is going to be from, uh, water, uh, from sea to sea, from one body of water to the next, from north to east. He said, they shall run to and fro, seeking the word of the Lord but shall not find it. Come on. That's why some people are church hopping. They have not found God speaking. Oh my God. You mean to tell me the preachers are preaching, the woman of God, man of God, preaching and teaching, and they're not hearing? They're not hearing. They're dull of hearing because what's coming out of the preacher's mouth is not God using them and speaking. It is not. It is error. There is no anointing in it. It is the anointing, you say it all the time, that destroys the yokes. So there is no anointing. There's a good word as far as being uh, theological and, and being a seminarian and being able to expound, but there is no anointing with it. And it takes the anointing of God to destroy yokes. It takes the anointing of God for people to understand and, and, and have an open ear to hear. It takes the anointing coming from you for people to receive and hear and then be willing to walk in that word. And then the other issue is we don't walk in it ourselves. We don't trust God ourselves. We're fainting by the wayside ourselves as leaders. So what are you expecting from the people? They're not finding. They don't see anything in you. They don't see anything in us. Then they're, now they're scattered. They're scattered like they did at the, at the end of, um, uh, of the book of the Old Testament. Amen. They're just scattered now. Going here in Malachi, just from here to there and all around because they're, 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 they're uh, short-sighted. They can't see. They can't hear. They don't hear anything. They're really crying out for help. Crying out for help. And then verse 13 
of the uh, eighth chapter of Amos, he says, in that day, and I know this is prophetic, the fair virgins and strong young men shall faint from thirst. See, that's why I told you the millennials, <laughs> They're gonna faint, they're fainting you all, and we're looking at them and we're saying, oh, we need to attract the millennials. You know what's gonna attract them to make them stand firm? The word of the Lord, the anointing of God, and then how they see us. What are we walking out? What are we living out? Are we living out the wrong things? Are we living for the Lord? They're watching us and they don't see the miracles. There are a lot of people that have never seen miracles. They've never seen the signs and wonders. And we, we got that missing because we are not submissive as leaders. God wants to do it for us, but where are the vessels? Where is he being glorified and lifted up? Yet the miracles are happening here and there in scattered instances, but God wants to see on a massive scale signs of his power signs of his word his unadulterated anointed word lived out through us jude said earnestly contend for the faith earnestly with all our hearts he didn't say earnestly contend for the women's day program if that i mean if you can use that there's nothing wrong but he said now i need you when you get through is what you're doing demonstrating my power? Is it demonstrating what my requirements are? Is it demonstrating that I sent my only begotten son to deliver you and then I see you behaving like this? Ah, my God. He says, in that day, the fair virgins and strong young men shall faint from thirst those who swear by the sin of samaria who say as your god lives o dan okay talking about the tribes and as the way of beersheba lives they shall fall listen to this you all catch this now they shall fall amos says and never rise again people of god we've got some blood on our hands what are we going to do about it? People are famished. They're hungry for truth. They're hungry for somebody who's living it. I can say some things to some people because I've lived some stuff and I came through it victoriously. And I also failed in some areas. And I can share that. I can share my failures. But I can also say out of my failures came my strength. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Where are the signs and where are the wonders? Come on in here. We're in trouble and we have allowed the people to make us preach what is comfortable. Amos is comparing God's word to bread. Bread is the life-giving quality. It's a life-giving quality. No one is able to live without God's guidance and without the divine word from the Lord. That's what keeps me, keeps me sane and keeps me uh, walking and holding on to the, to the horns of the altar simply because of eating the bread. God speaks and I eat. Come on. They're like honey in the honeycomb to me. Then when things are not right, and I chew that bread and eat it, and I need some stuff to get right, it becomes bitter. But it goes down to do what it needs to do so that we can stand tall in God. So God's punishment here fits the crime. They refused to hear the word of the Lord. They refused and rejected the prophets that gave them the word. So God says, okay, you don't want the word. I'm going to remove all of my voices from you, my voice from you. I'm going to re remove my voice from you. I'm going to remove my word to you. And then they begin to panic. They had rejected the prophetic word. And now uh, God withdrew his word from his people. So you don't want it. I'll take it all the way from you. So we've created monsters in the pulpit. 
because we shout and we show all favoritism for that stuff that really is not going to help us. We have taught people into weakness. We have preached people into weakness. People are weak because we taught weakness. Come on in here. And we're bringing people in and not giving them the substance. Man shall not live by bread alone, the physical bread, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. So we've created these monsters. Some of us have become monsters of teachers and monsters of pastors and monsters of evangelists. We've ignored the Bible study, the taste for teaching, uh, and we've shown up and financially supported entertaining ministry. We, we give good when people entertain us. Ooh, didn't the Lord bless us? We give good offerings. And so people now are saying, oh, that's what gets them in here. That's what makes them give. So now people are, comp preachers and pastors are compromising to hold the people, to bring the offerings in. And so Amos, and I'm going to get out of here in just a minute. The picture that Amos has is, is in, is, is in it's a vision. And it's of a panicking people who are running to and fro, frustrated, scurrying around in search for Yahweh's word. So today, what, what, what? How does it today? Here we are today, running to conferences, revivals. Our workers' meetings and our all our different meetings, we're running to them. We wanna we wanna do what we call faithfulness. Faithfulness means that you showed up and you did what was asked of you. That's what we're calling faithful. But that should be a byproduct because you are faithful to God. You're faithful to His Word. You understand God. You know you don't want to frustrate Him. You you don't want to do that. You want to grieve the Holy Spirit. And so you keep yourself in line with his word by the power of the Holy Ghost. You can't do it on your own because you know God, you understand him and you love him. So here we are today running to conferences and running to and fro. Same thing that people do, running over and running over there, running to different revivals, looking for a word. And we failed to show up for the Bible study. We failed to show up for the Sunday church school. Well, Y'all may call it Sunday school. Now we have preachers and teachers and pastors who don't know how to prepare the word for the people because they've gotten adjusted to a mode of giving people what they want to hear. So there are sermons to appease. There are lessons to appease the people because we are craving for entertainment. Hallelujah. Where are we now spiritually? Jude says we now need to earnestly contend. Go back to the body of faith, the body of truth. See what God said that we missed. We missed it. Hallelujah. And the vision is that of a drought, as Amos speaks. They're running to and fro. They sought to hear from God to no avail. He's not allowing them to hear from him. And so when the miracles and the signs and the wonders are restored and we know and understand God, we're going to see an influx of people. We're going to see an influx of the millennials coming in and say, I don't see anything else like this. There's nothing out here in, in what we've created. There's nothing like this. This is power right here. People want to want the reality. They want the real thing. When there's an absence of the word of God, huh, guess what? You're marking the end. You, you're looking dead at the E-N-D. Nothing can survive without God's power, without his word. And Amos God allowed Amos to envision what it looks like when God removes or withdraws his word slash his words from his people because they didn't appreciate it. They didn't want to hear it. They wanted to do their own thing. So there's a frantic quest worldwide 
in America, in the world. People are looking for truth. I don't have time to focus on a president of this or that. I pray for that president, but I've got a job to do. I got to know what God is requiring of me. I got to keep my focus on the word of God. I don't know what my assignment is. And I'm going to close this thing out. Hosea 5 and 6 says, With their flocks and herds, they shall go to seek the Lord. Here's Hosea speaking. But they will not find him. Can you know how devastating it is for me to walk through my house and be talking to God and can't find him? Can you, can you imagine praying and can't find the God you're praying to? You don't sense his presence. He doesn't manifest himself. You don't sense anything about him. Can you imagine seeking the Lord and cannot find him? You need him to restore. You need him to heal. You need him to deliver, but he's nowhere to be found because he's, uh, uh, Hosea says, he has withdrawn himself from them. And then verse seven of Hosea five says, they have dealt treacherous, 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 I'm sorry, treacherously, whew, treacherously with the Lord, for they have begotten, pagan, listen at this, they have begotten, they didn't obey. And look at what Hosea says. So what is the result? They have birth and they have begotten pagan children. How can we sing songs in a strange land? Some of us are in Babylon and we're trying to worship God in a strange land. God is not pleased, but know this, and I, I say this a lot. God always, somebody type this for me. I'm going to get out of here. God always has a remnant, <laughs> a people. We're suffering along with the ones who are not doing right. But watch what I tell you from the backside of the mountain. God's going to raise us up. That remnant, that people who we've been crying before the Lord. We've been grieving over what we see. We've been grieving over the fact that the truth is not being preached. We've been grieving over what's happening in our services and we've been grieving, but yet holding on to God, God's going to raise us up. And when he raises us up, and I hope you're in this number, God is going to once again show us I've seen them, but our young people and our folks in their 40s and 50, some of them have never seen miracles. God's going to begin again to do miracles, signs and wonders in his church, through his church, in the kingdom. The church is in the kingdom. He's going to do it through the church so that his kingdom can be built because we really need to see the hand of God. We need to see God. God is a spirit. They that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. But it is the spirit of God that uses that used his son. He said, when you see me, you see the father. So what we need to say now, when you see me operate uh, in the power of God, when you see me walking up right before God, you're seeing the God that I serve because he's doing it through me. It's not me. It's no more I, but it's the Christ <laughs> that liveth within me. That's how they see God. We are living in epistles, rid of men. I love you. I appreciate you tonight. I want to save this video. I want you to replay it. Please click the share button. Some need to hear this on this evening. This came up out of my spirit. I really didn't, uh, with all this going on, we uh, with the caregiving and all, I don't really have it, the opportunity to do this. In the name of Jesus, I, I, I decree and declare. And I thank God for this opportunity and this privilege. God is good. Love you. Pray for me as I pray for you. God bless.